What's up, everybody? Welcome. It is Friday evening. I hope everybody had a very productive week. I know we did at Team BC, Team BC headquarters, Team BC University, um, all our real estate partner agents at Real Brokerage, our network. Um, so I wanted to come on and talk to you guys today about a dynamic that is very simple. Right, but people people miss this because the the majority of it is hiding right underneath people's noses. Like a lot of people feel this, they innately kind of know this in quotes, meaning their intuition tells them something, but they still, for whatever reason, fail to take their lives and all these things to the next level and actually to the point of implementation full understanding and mastery of these things, okay? So this topic is very dense and it has so much. So let's kind of jump into it, right? Learn to play the game and win. What I initially mean by this is very simple. What you will find, and this is where you need to take stock of your own life and take a look at everything, okay? Where are you resisting life? <clears throat> as an example, right? I'll give you a ton. Relationships. You're going to get in relationships, you're going to break up. I just got out of an eight-year relationship, okay? And I've had relationships in the past that have started and ended, right? For you to start a relationship assumes there will be an ending at some point. And if you are with somebody until you die, the day you guys die, it's over here on this planet, right? <clears throat> your businesses, right? You're going to have your ups, your downs, you're going to have to play by a different set of rules if you've never started a business, okay? Yet, we will say things like, life is not fair, okay? And we'll all accept that, yet when a life circumstance gets presented to you that's not fair, what do we do? We bitch and we moan about it, and we act as if we can change it. You can't. And there's so many things that happen in life where we resist because we feel like we can change it, get around it, skip it. There's just so many dynamics. You can't, you can't change our nature as human beings. When you get into the business world, you're not going to change the rules of business. You're either going to learn and master it and do well, or you're going to get chewed up and spit out like 95% of people. You've seen the statistics in real estate. It's like 93% of people fail within a year or two. Small businesses, um, I think it was like 90% plus fail. And, and out of that, only a few percentage points, like a few percentage points are actually still even surviving after five years. I mean, all the data's out there. What will they do? They'll try, well, the data's bullshit. Come on, dude. At, at some point, the chickens come to roost. We have to accept the reality. But individuals continuously resist, 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 resist. It's not gonna get you anywhere. So ask yourself, where are you resisting? Okay. Let me give you some examples. I get into entrepreneurship, right? I decided to get my real estate license, build my own business from the ground up. All I did was soak up game and knowledge, right? Pay the coaches, do everything that I had to do. What I found other people, they start nitpicking. They want to enter this new world, which we all did. And they think they can set their own rules and be successful. Like, are you kidding me? The man just gave us a schedule. Ah, well, you know, I'm not a morning person. You know, all the excuses. Then, hey, I got a coach. How come you didn't? Well, you know, I don't have to pay. It's like, what are you, what are you doing? If that's the case, just do the other route. Get a job. Why even claim or go through the trouble of entering that game if you're not going to do it correct? If you come, come correct. All that is, that's one example of people resisting the rules of the game, right? Again, these games, all these little games that I'm talking about, life, these dynamics and certain things, they were long established before any of us were here. Even if you're older than me listening to this, you're not going to change that shit. That's like saying, you know what? We're going to go out there and we're going to we're going to uh, talk the lions uh, out of like tackling the gazelle and all this other stuff because we don't think that's right. And you know what? There's a better way that it can eat. It doesn't have to tackle it and kill it and eat it alive. Like, what are we doing? Like, if, if that came out on a TV show, everybody would watch that and be like, wait, 
what? It's ridiculous. But that's what people do in, in everyday life. It's nuts. But And then people will try to compare. Well, you know, people do inventions all the time. This is a separate subject. Because they're still playing by the game, right? They're just more useful to people. And they came up with an idea that they monetize. Great. And if it helps humanity, I'm all for it. But that has nothing to do with what I said. They're not trying to change the rules of the game. By making an invention to the marketplace or to the world to improve it, they've already played the game. They're playing the game. So I start with that with many people because if I get a new student, if I get a new person in my network, right? I have somebody hit me up on Instagram or Facebook or YouTube that they need help. Like this needs to be established. Otherwise, everything I say or do will go in one ear and out the other. Here's another one that people fuck up with. They think to learn from somebody or to learn knowledge or you know to be associated with someone like me that they have to like me. That, that, that's a flawed thing that, that, that we were taught. You don't have to like me to learn from me. You could hate my fucking guts. That, that doesn't remove my value to the world, to the marketplace. It doesn't. That's your own personal little gripe. But if you stopped yourself from learning from me because you don't like me or don't like certain things about me, that's a you problem. And that's going to severely limit you because if that's showing up with me, it's showing up in other places. But we do this all the time. Oh, man, I won't study that guy. Like, even if it's somebody else, right? Oh, he's a dick. It doesn't matter. Can you learn from him or not? And if you can, swallow your pride, put that personal shit to the side, and learn from the individual. Man, woman, doesn't matter. Again, learn how to play the game and win. I've learned a lot from my enemies. A lot. A lot. And this is why I'm still around. Because you have to innovate and grow and learn a lot. And if I blocked off certain people to learn from because of a personal gripe or something, and it could, and for most people, it's the most trivial shit. Well, Brian, you know, I can't study you because you cuss. Grow up. What are you, a little fucking pussy? Well, because this and that, or, you know, all the way. And, and that's typically what it turns into, even my detesters. Ah, oh, man, you can't. I mean, Brian grew his hair out. You can't follow him anymore. What the fuck does that have to do with anything? Are you that stupid? Because people will tell me. How, how do I know this? Because people will tell me. Well, he said this. or uh, It's like, what? But those people that always detest me or don't like me are fucking losers. They're never productive and they're never high producers. They're never people who are of affluence, right? High value men, whatever you want to call it, right? Successful entrepreneurs. It's never them. But see, it, it stems from that. I can't study brian or anybody fill in the blank because of some personal issue it's never a value-based thing or anything else i mean it, it, it's unreal right and that's just one so so this stuff can really hurt you on the surface but also it, it literally governs people's operating system their mind from the bottom and that simple thing can actually wreak havoc in people's lives if it's in there hey don't if you don't like the person or there's any little thing you don't like about them, don't study them, don't learn from them, they're a bad person. That's wrong. That's wrong. That's wrong. That's very wrong. All right? Another one, right? Think about execution. Okay? Let's say you're given a blueprint to do something. Let's say you're given a blueprint to do something from, from anybody, right? Forget it. It could be acting, right? Basketball, whatever. Person who's the coach, person who's the leader that gives you that, right? And then you coming in as the student. You coming in as the new person, right? whatever, right? Just think of that example. Let's say we were watching a movie. If the student in that case, that new person, team member, whatever you want to call them, right? Be, took that blueprint and we're watching this movie, okay? Because I, I want to hear your opinions on this because this is typically when I make these examples is when it becomes clear to people. What if you're watching the movie? And instead of following the blueprint, the person is like critiquing it, complaining about it, what they don't like, questioning what the coach or leader, or co you know, person says, the boss, whatever you want to call it, you know, just doesn't follow direct, doesn't want to do it, says, oh, I'll do some of these things, but the other ones I don't want to do. 
right? And then we follow them over a couple of days or the course of their career. And it's that same thing over and over. Like, what would you think if you were watching that? I don't think anybody would be watching that like, yeah, he's getting it. He's doing his thing. Everybody would say, what an idiot. They need to fire that guy or kick him off the team or what's going on here? So, but then when I look at people's personal lives, they do that. I have personal conversations with people regularly and I tell them what to do and they won't do it. So th th this is just a plague. And the excuses and the stories, it's the same old shit. But I tell them, it's like, dude, right? Because I, I, I've had a lot of very like intense phone calls with people where it's like, dude, you're at a crossroads. You're either going to do this because you know you need to do it and you're going to change your course and now do what you need to do to achieve the result that you want or... By saying no to this, which is what you normally do to all the opportunities and things that you need to do to change, you will continue walking down the same path, getting the same shit and the same results. But before we get off this call, if you're not going to do it and go this way again, I want you, I want it to come out of your fucking mouth because I want you to admit to yourself that you're fucking up. And I have people do that and some do, right? And this could be for anything, right? It could be, they could be buying my services, my coaching, joining my team. But if I ever get to this point in a conversation with somebody, I will get them to admit it. Yes or no. Because I want them to be real with themselves. Because if you're going to keep doing the same shit, good. Live with it and deal with it. Don't complain about it. Because I will make you swallow your own bullshit. You see, and not enough people are doing that. You don't have enough people in your life telling you, hey, dude, you're fucking up. Checking in with you. Holding you accountable, right? Everybody needs this. But no, no, but nobody again. And again, the barrier a lot of times is paying for it. People don't want to pay for shit. Oh no, you'll pay to go to the strip club, right? You'll pay to fucking, you know, $30 drinks at the club or whatever it is, but you won't pay to improve yourself. That shows where your priorities are. So don't step up to the big players and say you want to be at the table if a basic thing like investing in yourself you're unwilling to do. Then you don't belong at the table and you're not going to get there. Sorry. Again, rules of the game. You think I was ushered into the top tier clubs in the car world back in the day before I bought my Lamborghini? No. But as soon as I got the Lamborghini and I proved myself, hey, man, come right in. I couldn't get access to certain circles and people until I got that car. Just like getting the first kind of supercar gave me access to a certain circle. Certain things like that, you will have to pay the price of entry. And a lot of people don't want to do it. I have people who are still floating around on my Instagram lives and YouTube lives who have been here for years who are in the same fucking position and they don't do anything different. And I'm like, dude, what are you doing? I tell them, I say, dude, if you're not going to get on my coaching, just leave because you've been here for fucking four years asking the same questions. What are you going to do? But again, they only get that dose of reality when they come on my live. <laughs> Everything else is set up as cushy and soft and accommodating, and it's okay. You're going to be good, right? It's almost like uh, that old movie, Major Pain, right? He was a hard ass, but he got the job done. Now, I know it's a silly movie, but you have to understand that role. It's not that we have to live our life 100% like a military style, but you need some enforcement. You need some discipline. You need some of that high level accountability you need some pressure why that prepares you for the real world that prepares you for the real world right that's why my students when they go out there they kick ass because the practice is much harder than the actual real life but most people don't have that and they're going out there and they're getting swallowed up and chewed out and spit out boom 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 and it's just like you're in you're out you're in you're out It's the same thing with like um, any, any, anything that's relationship-based like business, right? Sales, where we're dealing with customers. Again, the title, learn how to play the game and win. If I'm working in a people business, a sales business, a relationship business, the number one priority should be my ability to communicate and create connections with people and sell. That's it. Not fucking dancing on TikTok and all this other shit that people claim is what you need to do. It's the same thing with buying leads. Why are you buying leads? You can't close a fucking door and you want to buy a lead? 
the people who are motivated don't want to waste time. And if you slip and you slide and you don't know what you're doing, you don't have systems, they're going somewhere else and you just wasted your money. But see, but people think that's a fucking shortcut in business. It's not. You will always even out and level out to where your actual level is. You might have little blips of success or little months where you do well, but you'll always even out where you're at. And it blows my mind how little dedication people have to the people aspect of the business. Oh man, you know, I'm good. I'm sharp. And then we have a conversation and the person is just a mess. It's like, what do you mean? Dude, your communication is average at best. What do you mean it's good compared to who? Are you learning from the elite? Are you comparing yourself to, to the elite to like get a good baseline? Or is it just with the guys in your office who maybe you're doing a little bit better than them so you think you're hot shit? If, if that's the case, you got to raise the bar drastically. You see? But unless someone's grabbing you by the neck right here and saying, look, this is nonsense. You need to upgrade this and really almost in a way forcing you to make those changes. If you haven't done them yourself, you're not going to do them yourself. Uh, I, I don't uh, Sometimes I, I really think people believe that whole self-made bullshit. You're not self-made. You read books from other people. You get advice from other people. You learn from other people. You have people working with you and alongside you. What do you mean you're self-made? Your idea might be self-made, but your success isn't self-made. You got help along the way. Come on, let's be real. Everybody did. Are you really learning the rules? One of the rules is there are no shortcuts. Everybody will say that and admit it, but when I look at most people, they're looking for shortcuts. I look at my sales industry background, right? And what I do in real estate, and it blows my mind. If I put a post, right? Th th this is how ridiculous this is. Hey, I'm doing a challenge, you know, and I'll talk about traditional stuff. Talking to people, cold calling, door knocking, crickets. If I say, hey, I created this email that gets you a ton of business. Comment below if you want it. I'll get fucking hundreds of people. Oh, give me the email. Give me the email. Why? Because in their mind, it's a fucking shortcut and path of least resistance to get business. It doesn't work. And all of you are probably laughing at that example that I, that I gave, but maybe some of you have even commented on those posts or you think that that's real. It's, it's mind-blowing. And then some of those people will come back crawling to me later, say, oh, I wasted two years. I spent X amount of money. Can you help me? It's like, probably not. Because now you're going to expect me to give you everything on a silver platter and for free because you're broke. I'm not going to pick up the pieces, dude. Sorry. I'm not, you know, I'm not the charity case that's going to come help you. But I, I, again, I'm not even angry at them. I feel bad because these things and tactics prey on human nature. But see, these people don't know the rules of the game. That's why I'm bringing it up, y'all. You need to know the rules of the game. It's not a surprise that all these, these big marketers and stuff do these cycles where they're big for like a year, then they leave, right? And then you see a new face and a new person kind of giving a similar message, right? Why do they disappear? And how come certain people like me, even though I've been deplatformed, keep coming back and and we're here for five years, 10 years, right? 10 years now, dude. It's crazy. I've been doing stuff on social media now for 10 years. I can't imagine had I never gotten, you know, deplatformed and demonetized, how big my original channel would be by now. Probably half a million, if not more, subscribers for sure. For sure. But that's okay. I know how to play the game and I know the rules, which is why I'm always going to be around until I decide not to. This is why I could move across the country with full confidence that I could keep going and keep doing what I'm doing. Making moves, meeting people, doing this. It's easy. I, I know the code now. I can insert that code anywhere I go. So what I do effectively is take the emotion out of it because that, that's really what makes this difficult for people. It's because they don't know how to deal with the emotion, right? The emotion of, oh man, I have to do hard work. Uh, I'm going to go this route. Because it seems easier. You're breaking the rules of the game. Why? Because that's an emotional decision. Right? And if you're listening to this and you're of age 18 and over, ooh, that's going to be a tough lesson. And the interesting thing about our life as human beings is when you make a mistake and you get taught a lesson by 
whatever you believe, God, the universe, right? Because I appeal to everybody. Understand that if you keep making the same mistakes, you're going to get punished harder and harder for making those same mistakes. Your own DNA will punish you more and more, right? The world, people, business, right? Imagine running a business and making the same mistakes. You'll be out of the business. You'll get crushed. You'll get eliminated. So we have to learn as we go. So if you made a mistake, fair enough, right? We're not perfect, but how can we keep making the same mistakes over and over? One of the rules of this game is, again, you can't graduate until you learn the lesson and apply it, but you're going to be punished harsher and harsher and worse and worse for making these same mistakes. And you see it all the time. And in many cases, when you guys see big people just suddenly topple over, or people that made millions lose it all, it's typically when you trace it, stuff like this. They made maybe one or two or three basic mistakes that in the beginning isn't that tragic. But when you have a multi-million dollar you know, company or corporation, those little mistakes now are an avalanche and they could destroy everything because there's more at stake. You know, flying the $40,000 plane compared to the $10 million jet fighter, right? One crashes, no big deal. The other one crashes, uh-oh, $10, $15 million. Someone fucked up. So take this, and this is feeding on from the previous week's, you know, lectures and lives that I've done. Intelligence, the higher intelligence applied can see this. And for a lot of people, this is tough, especially in the realm of relationships, because they want to deny our nature as men and women out there in the field. They want to deny that, right? Well, everybody's an individual. Sure, but we all have the same general tendencies. We're more similar than we are different as human beings. And if you do any basic study on psychology and the history of the human beings, you can learn this stuff very easily. And I've been talking about this shit for fucking 10 years now. So I can't be mad for a man being a man or a woman being a woman. It behooves me to learn and then move understanding that dynamic. That's what it is. So when I talk about that and I teach that to my students, right? that's real life game to go out there from a social standpoint and a business standpoint because our nature comes out in everything that we do as human beings. And if you learn that code, now you can move accordingly and you start taking your emotions out of it because you understand why people are being erratic or why things happening in the way that it's happening or why people are responding a certain way. You start to understand it. So now instead of having this weak subjective experience where you're all emotional, you take an objective approach, right? Higher intelligence, boom. I understand the situation. I can respond accordingly. Why? It's a tool in my tool belt now and I know how to navigate this thing. It's a pretty cool position to be in, especially socially, because 99% of the world fucking sucks when it comes to social skills. They're terrible. And I could not even try, and I'm meeting new people every day, right? Like, shout out to Brian, right? He's my calisthenics trainer. I'm getting him new people fucking almost on a daily basis, dude. Met another person at the gym today. Is probably going to train with him. Got him some people at my event over the weekend, right? Like, dude, if I wanted to, I could, I could sign up for him, new people every day, just with conversation. And I do that with myself too. That's why I'm always preaching to you guys. Get on my shit. Go to my website, right? Book a call if you want to talk about real broker, right? Get on my fucking Agagi program if you don't have money. If you got a little bit of money right now and you're a salesperson or entrepreneur, get on Distinguished Agent. That's more of a high ticket program. It's going to help you a lot with all the lectures and information and things that we cover and techniques. I mean, it's just, it, it, it's so much now because it's been years of stuff put together. It's just that library is untouchable. If I sold that library on its own, I don't know what price tag I would put on it. Because I have people coming in and watching one lecture like, holy fuck, what did I get into? This is amazing. Exactly, dude. But see, the communication and the skill and, and, and all of these things, right? Because I understand that me getting out there and, and getting after it and being assertive and going out there and conquering as a man is an attractive energy for people, regardless if they're a woman or a man. That's appealing to people. That's that winning energy. That makes you more magnetic, right? Because you're going after what you want and you're not apologizing for it. Now, society has, well, oh, that's too aggressive and misogynist and toxic masculine. That's a bunch of bullshit to get you to stop going after what you want. Eh, wrong. Go after it. Why? We're not harming anybody. We're not breaking any fucking laws. We're getting out there and we're getting it. We have energy. We have enthusiasm. We have life energy. For those of you who have been around for years, you remember on my old channel when it was really popular, people would kill oh, this guy's on drugs. No, I'm not, dude. I'm high on life. 
and I have energy because I take care of myself. And it, and it, it, it baffles me now to see people 5, 10, 15 years younger than me that look like they could be my age. It's like, bro, what are you doing with your life? How can you be in your 20s and have no energy or testosterone? What are you doing? How can you not have this desire? Like, I'll meet people who are flat broke. It's like, dude, how do I have more drive and competitiveness and enthusiasm for the future than you? You have your back against the fucking wall, dude. What is it going to take for you to get up and do something? Another, another rule of the game, closed mouths don't get fed. That's why you hear me and top people promoting our shit all the time. Sign up for this. Sign up for that. Join me here. Hey, agents, I'm doing an event here. You know, come, right? I'm oh, And I'm always going to do it. If you don't like it, turn it off. That's what we do. Why wouldn't I promote what I believe in and what I stand behind and what my product is, whether it's my real estate stuff, my personal stuff, my coaching? Why wouldn't I? I know it's damn good. And of course, I'm going to promote it because that's what I do. That's my businesses. That's my life. That's my brand. Why aren't you doing the same? You think all these people, oh, no, don't do that, right? Just you know, be more low-key. Are those people successful? Are those people, that, uh, individuals that you're actually looking up to? No. They don't know the rules of the game. They ain't playing the game, right? <laughs> one of the neighborhood cats got into it with another one. Hey. Hey. All of this stuff is basic, y'all. But w w when I go out there and I meet with people, and I'm talking to people boots to ground on a daily basis. I'm not surprised anymore why people approach me a certain way and, and look at me a certain way. Most places I go into now, people stop and look. You know, It could be how I carry myself or how I'm dressed. That, that doesn't surprise me. It used to. But now I'm realizing the baseline is so low that somebody like me who just simply, we can say, has their shit together, everyone's like, wow, really? Are, are we in that low of a state? that me having my shit together just causes this crazy response. Oh man, you know, the way you dress, it's like, dude, you could do the same thing. I'm sure you like, you have your own style, dress in your style, you'll get the same response. Why do you default to the generic? Why are you blending in? Because one of the rules of the game is you have to stand out, but we don't want to stand out. Well, I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm not really the one to stand out and there's nothing special about me because you don't accentuate it. By all being individuals, we are by default unique. None of us look the same. None of us sound the same. Even if you look similar, you don't look identical. Even if you have a twin, you guys are different a little bit. And we can normally tell the difference. Because there's at least enough degrees of separation where you're your own individual. Word, individuality. Let it, let it shine. Let it express itself. You know, when I started, I felt like I had to sit in that box before I really started reinventing myself. So back in the day, I wouldn't wear a shirt like this even though I loved it. Now I wear it proudly because this is me this is my style this is what i like whether it's my suits whether it's the short sleeve stuff like it doesn't matter dude i'm gonna let it fly but that's why eternally i'm always gonna stand out and be a player in the game because i'm playing more by the rules than other people and you see when these individuals say well you know break the rules like we hear that right be the rebel and this and that sure but to a degree when we play a game and you subject yourself to a game, you have to abide by its parameters, at least initially. Now, when you become a master player of the game, sure, break the rules. But that always has to be said in context. You can't just come in, right? It would be like if I came in and said, you know what? I'm getting into the business world. I'm not going to wear a suit. Fuck the suit. That's stupid. Right from the get-go, not going to work, dude. I still wear suits, and I do it my way. And I like wearing suits, actually. They're fucking they're super comfortable. I love them. But now I'm not on a, you know, I'm not wearing a suit every broadcast that I do in every video. When I still meet with clients and do business meetings and all that and events, sure, I wear my suit. I look good. I do that in general. I go to the bank and they're like, man, you you almost always dress super sharp. Well, exactly, bro. So I take pride in that, right? You want to learn the rules of the game? You always need to be on your A game. That's one of the rules. Not gonna see me fucking out there in chanclas and fucking looking half naked. Now. We can sit here all day and argue about it. I want the best result. Could you do whatever you want? Of course, but I want the best result for me, my brand, and my future. And that equals me being on that A game more often than not. Because again, we're not perfect. You might catch me out there 
right? Like you catch me leaving the gym, sure, I'll have shorts on and a fucking shirt. Just left the gym, dude, right? Even today, right? I think it was, uh, I forget his name. He came up to me at the gym. Oh, hey, BC, let me take a picture with you. We took a picture. Right there, there you go. That's the one time you're going to catch me, maybe not dressed as sharp. A shout out to him. That's great that he came up to me and said that because a lot of people will DM me. Hey, I saw you here. That's cool. It's like, dude, why don't you come say hi? Could have had a conversation. That has to change. You see something, you go. You see someone, hi, right? You got to do it. You got to do it. Because especially from a communication standpoint, if you want to blossom and connect with more people, you need to be actively engaging it and working that muscle. Those muscles for people atrophy because they don't use them. Just like part of that is this, getting on here and talking to the world. Because I might not have that many people yet live, but these are getting hundreds and hundreds of views in the replay, even though I might only have 10, 15, or 20 people on live. And wait till this channel gets monetized again. This shit's going to blow up. All right? And I'm already working with my assistant on the back end to improve it and add all the shit. And we're going to set it up right when I move. It's going to be dope. I'm going to have an office set up and a home office set up. It's going to be fucking sick because I enjoy this like talk show type stuff. And I'm going to invite people, right? So what I want, what I want to do now, I'll open this up to you guys if you have any questions as I continue. Um, there's a link here, right? There's um, a StreamYard link, right? I'm going to put it in the chat. If you want... Uh, if you want to jump on and ask a question, right, you're more than welcome to. I'll open up the line here for a couple minutes. Normally, I have some people join, some people don't. Uh, it's up to you, but just stay focused, man. Use your higher intelligence. Use your reasoning to look at the game and say, am I playing this thing correctly? Right? Cool. Let's, um, let's take a look at some of this stuff. See if I got any questions. How many hours per day should we be striving to deliberately work in the beginning? Well, think about it this way, my friend, Frankie. Great question. Most people work a nine to five. And if you want to get ahead, especially initially, you're going to have to work more than that. So if you work on your own for yourself, you have to start earlier and end later. Now, you don't have to do that forever, but at least to get ahead, you're going to have to put in more work than other people, right? So when I started in real estate, my actual official workday probably started at seven or 8 a.m. and it went until six or seven. So I was putting in probably two hours more in the morning and two hours more at night. That's four hours a day over a five day work week. That's 20 hours. That's half a week per week added compound effect over a year. And that same year by adding two hours in the beginning and two hours at the end, I've worked maybe an additional half a year, right? That's how you get ahead. Anthony said, I invested 15 K into myself seven months ago. Salute to you, my friend. Hell yeah. Frankie says, making cold calls. I love it, man. Keep working. Justin says, I feel like women generally are naturally smarter than men socially. Men can be great for sure, but just curious if you observe this and wonder if they're naturally better at sales. Thoughts? Great question, bro. You know why they're more, in general, better socially than most men? Is because they're more socialized, especially prettier girls. They're approached more. People talk to them more. They want to right? Get, get their attention, right? So getting more reps makes them a little bit better on average socially than most men. So yes, I don't think it's natural. I just think it's in our nature that they get more attention, especially in their early days. So they're more practiced, right? You have the same capacity though. Um, can they be better at sales? Absolutely. I, I remember doing a lot of talks for women and women's groups, right? And women's events. And yeah, they can be. Because they have a weapon that we don't have, beauty, right? And that is lethal in the sales world. So absolutely, they have, they have, they have the capacity to. Most women don't look at it that way, though. All right? Favorite book you have read that is about communication? Man, I get this all the time, Wade. Great question. I really don't think there's particularly great books on communication, right? There's a lot that are good reads and will teach you some stuff, but... You're going to learn more in the field and getting direction from people who are top-notch communicators than you are reading a book. But if you want a book, um, one that would be a little bit more advanced, it's called Pitch, like a, a baseball pitch, Pitch Anything by Oren Cleff. Great book. Um, I think even some of the, the beginner, like Tony Robbins books, talk a little bit about NLP and some stuff in regards to communication. Like Personal Power, I think is a great book. Um, you know, you might want to get an introduction to NLP book. Any of them will suffice, right? That might give you some basic framework on communication that might help you a little bit. Because communication first stems with the individual. And then once you conquer that, 
right? It's very easy for you to influence other people. For scheduling a successful day, including gym health. Well, you know, assuming you work a nine to five or eight to five or six is going to be your work day in the morning, you definitely want to get some sort of exercise in at least 30, 45 minutes. You want to read at least 30, 45 minutes, right? And you want to make sure you're, you're hydrating, right? I would definitely recommend that dude in the morning and at night, same thing. If you're going to work on a side hustle, right? Or you have additional time, get some more reading in, right? Maybe a couple nights a week, go out and go to like meetup.com and find some groups that are investors, right? If you're in real estate, get around more people, go to networking events, like do that at least two or three nights a week. So in a, in a week of like seven days, you're going out at least two or three afternoons or evenings to mingle with people and talk. That, that's the best way. Cause then you're going to start really, um, you know, growing at least socially building connections. Cause a lot of people, uh, fail to create networks of individuals. Like my network is powerful. I have top investors, developers, uh, lawyers, right? Like I can give you access to a ton of people. And that's one of the biggest resources. Like when people come coach with me is they get access to that network and it helps them tremendously. Right. Especially the high ticket ones. Uh, let's see. Scary hour says, hi, Brian, on my YouTube channel, I make content that my viewers want, but I don't feel fulfilled. Do you think it would hurt me to base my content solely on my interest? I think you need a healthy balance of that scary hours, because when you start taking YouTube seriously as a business, you may love certain content. Uh, content, but if no one watches it, right? Because I'm assuming you would want to do YouTube full time or really make some money off of it and turn it into a business or fuel your business. You kind of have to mix and match. I started doing content that just fulfilled me. Then I started mixing and matching with what people wanted. Because once you build an audience, if you want to keep it, you have to make sure that you're producing content that they like, just like me going live. I enjoy this and my audience likes it. So I think it's a good mix of both. Should read a book. Uh, yeah. Uh, 52 books a year. Yeah. Basically a book a week. Sure. You know, if you're reading and you're applying the knowledge and you're really retaining it, sure. But if you're just reading it to like say that you read 52, I wouldn't recommend it. Right. I would rather somebody read 20 in a year, but really internalize the knowledge and apply it to their lives, whether it's philosophical, you know, technical, like a sales book or business book. So I really think it's on the retention and the application of that knowledge. Joey says, uh, would you say that women have an edge in sales because they have more uh, mirror neurons in combination with a higher level of empathy? Um, that's more of a personality thing. Could, could they to an extent, right? But the beauty of communication, right? So naturally the aptitude, sure, I'd give them the edge. But when somebody really starts studying sales and communication at a very high level, I tell people it's an even playing field, generally speaking. It's not like a physical thing. Like if you're not tall enough or athletic enough, right? You didn't have those gifts. I really believe communication, anybody can master. But just as a baseline, uh, assuming that people have no training and just whatever they bring to the table naturally, then you could have an argument for sure, Joey. Absolutely. Cool. Uh, Justin says, I'm going to be doing sales at the gym, making phone calls. Good. Personal training people at the gym and thinking I could slip in. I'm a realtor. Yep, sure. Absolutely. All right. Get your hustle on. Get your hustle on. All right, guys, a uh, couple quick announcements as we continue. I am, so I, for the people who follow me who um, aren't banging in the pockets yet, I released a program, like a sales entrepreneurship real estate program called the Real Estate Agagi to give people baseline basic stuff. You get an accountability call, you get a ton of stuff. I've added that link in the description. Um, we added about 50 people last month. I'm looking to get 50 more this month, 40 or 50. I can't remember the, the final number. Uh, but I recommend you guys get on that. Uh, I'm doing an event, a three or four day challenge, four day challenge at the end of the month. Anybody who signs up between now and the end of, I think Christmas is the date that we set the 25th, you'll get that challenge for free, right? So I'm doing that challenge and I'm offering the real estate agogi to people. Um, it's, it's low barrier to entry. Anybody can do it. If any of these subjects that I've ever covered on YouTube, the last 10 years interests you, it's going to help you a lot. I really recommend you get on it. I've had so many people ask for it. That's why I created it. Because, you know, most of my stuff now is high ticket, like distinguished agent and that kind of stuff. Um, you know, because I put a lot of time and effort into that, right? But I have that. I'm doing another in-person event in Miami in January. So I'm just throwing some stuff out there. But all the links are in the, are in the description, y'all. Uh, keep up the content, Brian. Watch your videos. Tell me, hell yeah. Sweet. Better communicating. Fantastic. When I found your channel. Oh, okay. The GTR. Oh, man. Long time ago. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, man. You've been around for a minute then. <laughs> Hell yeah. 
Oh, you accomplished it, bro. Congratulations, man. That's awesome. That's a fun car, man. That's another. That's a car that I may uh, repurchase in the future. Right? For real. The GTR is definitely a, a special car, that's for sure. And everybody gets a sword and a free shield and mask. Absolutely. You get the helmet, 100%. Cool. All right, guys. Uh, I'm going to log off for the evening. Maybe I'll do some this weekend, too. I'm not sure. But I will continue. And maybe the banner on YouTube, I'm going to change. Uh, maybe like every like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we'll do the show. I don't know. I'm really enjoying it. And the main benefit of this, for those of you who are into YouTube, is these live shows are uh, really great at getting your watch time up. Because if a couple people watch this, it's 45 minutes long, right? That's almost one watch hour. If 100 people watch it, that's 100 watch hours if they watch it in its entirety, right? And you need, I think, 4,000 or 5,000 to monetize. 1,000 subscribers, and I think it's four or 5,000. And we're already getting close. Since I started doing lives like the last week or two, I did like two or three last week and four or five this week. I've literally doubled or tripled the the watch time on my channel just with doing this and my regular content, right? That's a little plug for y'all who want to build your YouTube. Go live. It may not be the most favorite in the algorithm, but it's great for accumulating a connection with your audience and also getting those watch uh, hours up, which are crucial in becoming a YouTube partner and getting your monetization. All right, that's it for this one, y'all. Have a good evening and we'll uh, we'll talk